Hey folks, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to World of Warships Legends. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Independence, which is a Tier 5 premium aircraft carrier for the US Navy um, that you can obtain through the Lucky 6 campaign as one of the ultimate rewards for reaching level 100 with Admiralty backing. Additionally, you can also obtain this through uh, 10,000 doubloons if you decide to opt for the USS Black instead. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Independence um, and, uh, well, uh, just talking about it really. So, let's, uh, let's talk about the description that it gives immediately. So, the Independence uh, was a successful light aircraft carrier based on the Cleveland-class cruiser. The ship was well armoured, had high speed, and carried numerous anti-aircraft artillery. Small displacement limited the aircraft ha uh, carrier's hangar capacity. Entered service in 1943, and there were nine ships in the series. I'm not really sure what um, what relevancy this has to Lucky Six. I know that the Black has the 666 on the uh, the hull, but I'm not really uh, sure about this one. Um, but either way, that's a description there. So it's a light aircraft carrier. So this isn't uh, like the uh, we're going to be comparing it to the Ranger today. This isn't like that. This is a lot lighter. So don't expect it to be as heavy duty um, as that. So the pros and cons of this is we have powerful AA defences, above average AA gun uh, firepower, uh, deck full, um, meaning that it has more units of aircraft on the deck, and unfortunately a downside is no secondary guns. But one of the big things that I've noticed with this ship is that there's no secondary guns, and obviously if you've got destroyers running up on you uh, that are able to sort of flank around and get behind your team's lines, you're going to be really screwed <laughs> when you're going up against them. Not that you're not in other aircraft carriers, but I know other aircraft carriers like the, uh, the Vessa can... Uh, well, they have secondary guns that can somewhat deal with approaching targets. However, that's not to say that this doesn't get anti-aircraft coverage, because it gets an awful lot of it in the form of 20mm Orlicons and Bofors, which, if I'm not mistaken, although technically on statistics the Ranger is better in the anti-aircraft regard, I believe... Um, it's better in the sense that it forms more flak clouds, whereas this one's kind of just more raw DPM. So, if we go over here um, to the stats, um, you'll notice that the survivability, it's, um, it's fairly standard of your uh, typical sort of tier 5 aircraft carrier. However, it is just slightly less than the Rangers by about 2 or 3k uh, hit points, which is a shame, um, because obviously we want aircraft carriers to be survivable, but um, you have to bear in mind this is a light carrier. However, it does get more armour than that of the independent, uh, sorry, the Ranger, purely because this is based on a Cleveland uh, hull. And you'll notice here, it's pretty much got all the nukes and crannies of a Cleveland hull anyway. You'll notice here that the Citadel is very low down to the waterline. It's still possible to hit it, so just bear that in mind. But, um... You've got some good armour, so you're trading off a bit of that hit points for a bit more armour, pretty much. Or I say a bit more, it's over 70mm in some areas, so that's nice. In terms of aircraft, I, I've sort of looked into it. It's very hard with aircraft carriers. When you don't own them, it's hard to kind of gauge what the performance of them is like, because obviously it's all dependent on the aircraft that they have. So... Looking at it, what I can see is that the Rangers aircraft are just slightly better, or I say slightly better, they've got a lot more hit points, however, they are slightly slower, but overall, the Rangers, in my opinion, the Rangers aircraft are better, that's not to say that the aircraft on the Independence is bad, 
but uh, they're, they're a bit subpar compared to what the Ranger is capable of. So, um, uh, just bear that in mind. Now, um, but the upside of this is the fact that you have more aircraft on the deck itself, which means, although they may not be as good aircraft as the Rangers, you'll be able to get more flight groups out more frequently, and especially if you're running a uh, modifications such as the air groups um, mod 1, you'll be able to effectively get more air groups out at a time compared to other, uh, of course, aircraft carriers. However, naturally it says here that uh, it doesn't really have a small, a, a large hangar capacity, so naturally you've got to keep that in mind that although you might have more units on the deck, you're going to need your aircraft to come back alive in order to keep on pumping out them groups off the deck. Now, no secondary guns, which is unfortunate, but we have this thing plastered in anti-aircraft guns. As you can see here, we've got uh, 14 20mm Orlicons, we've got multiple both for guns, and overall you'll even see here in the overview, they are plastered all around this thing left, right, and center, which is nice to have. Now, moving on to maneuverability, the upside of the independence over the Ranger is that it is significantly more maneuverable than the Ranger, which means you're going to be able to get around the map a lot quicker, you're also going to be able to dodge um, torpedoes off destroyers more effectively. Not, you're probably still going to get sunk if one run, runs up on you and you can't deal with it, but it's still nice to be able to have that trade-off of having no guns for more maneuverability. So that's very nice to have, um, overall just being quite maneuverable. In terms of concealment, um, although it's a light carrier and technically smaller than the Ranger, it's actually, um, it's actually got worse concealment than the Ranger, which I find a bit odd, but I, I'd assume that's some uh, sort of balancing. But you've just got to be careful uh, with this a bit, because obviously with no secondary guns it means you can be detected quite easily. So um, with all these in mind, what I'd assume the sort of playstyle of the independence will be is Sending out multiple flight groups, obviously both uh, torpedo bombers and dive bombers, although your dive bombers do technically do more damage. But ideally, I think your sort of playstyle with this is to send out a bunch of flight groups, harass the enemy, and keep manoeuvring around the map, utilising that speed and manoeuvrability to try and get into positions behind your team so that you're not left out in the open to that uh, long detectability range so that other ships can come find and get you. So it, uh, I want to say it's all about being on the move, and I think that fits the sort of playstyle of this being a light carrier. Am I going to pick this up? Probably not. I think in terms of comparing this to the Ranger, I do want to unfortunately say I think the Ranger is better. However, I'm not a person who wants premium ships to be overpowered anyway, so I think this is a very nice addition. Should you get this? It's entirely up to you um, what your preference is. If you prefer the playstyle of carriers over destroyers, definitely pick this up. There's not many premium carriers in the game, and I think this would be a nice little addition to pick up, especially at tier 5. However, there are some more caveats that you have to keep in mind. Although this is a premium, you have to bear in mind that carriers do get the reduced rewards from the end of battles, or so I read somewhere, and I believe I've experienced it in practice in game. So, although this is a premium, you're still going to be getting them reduced rewards, which... It's a bit of a shame, and I feel like... If you want something to kind of grind out your uh, credits, picking the black is going to be better, especially if, especially with the uh, changes making it so that uh, premiums at tier 7 get an increase. Uh, nearly said SL then, that's Warfunder credit booster, my bad. But overall, 
I'm not going to be picking this up purely for a few historical reasons. It's not a specific ship. I don't really like the flag for it. Um, and although it's a cool aircraft carrier, usually most of the time light aircraft carriers tended to carry fighter aircraft, whereas the main big sort of main carriers would carry your dive bombers and attackers, so it's not really fully historically accurate. But of course it's World of Warships, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna boot it there. But overall, I think if you wanna pick up this ship, it's definitely not a bad choice. And I know not a lot of people are probably going to have this, because definitely more people are going to go for the black instead. However, I hope you all have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next one.